The current gen consoles have been out for a bit more than one year now and most of the games this year have been cross generation games. But starting in 2022 we will see a ton of next gen only games with visuals and technical features that have not been possible before. Recently head of Xbox program management Jason Ronald spoke about when we can expect to see the next gen features implemented in games. And so today we have a look into when we can see the next gen features like VRS, sampler feedback streaming, direct machine learning etc etc. And which upcoming games will feature them and how you will be able to recognize them in actual games. Hello gamers from around the world, this is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with my latest video on some current gen graphic features. And if you end up enjoying yourself while watching this video, it would be awesome of you to consider to hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. Okay, thank you guys, you rock big time and now let's dive into the topic at hand. In the lead up to the current generation of consoles, Xbox heavily advertised a broad variety of technical features that are supported by the Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architecture as well as the DirectX 12 Ultimate suit. A lot of technical abbreviations have been thrown around like variable rate shading, sampler feedback streaming, direct storage etc which build the Xbox Velocity architecture. But also things like DirectX ray tracing, the direct machine learning, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, mesh shaders and many other tools have been promoted as true next gen game changers when it comes to graphical fidelity and performance. But with the consoles launching in the middle of the pandemic, a lot of those tools, drivers and features were not ready at launch. So over the course of this first year we have seen constant improvement when it comes to performance of Xbox games. As more and more of these tools actually matured and developers got a better understanding of how these technologies work. Recently my good friends from the Iron Lord podcast had an interview with Jason Ronald who is the head of Xbox program management and he was asked directly when he expects game developers to actually utilize the full next gen tool set. So let's hear what the man had to say. Hearing Phil talk about and you guys talk about waiting on the full feature set for RDNA 2, right? And, and, and then also things like super resolution. So is it one of those things that as the generation goes on and it matures, we'll start to see implementation of that? Will developers mention this kind of stuff, or, you know, as far as utilization from the team and stuff like that? I'm just curious, long-term, with the, especially RDNA 2, that was a big one, I feel. Yeah, I mean, developers are using a whole host of these features, like variable rate shading is becoming more and more common in more titles and whatnot. Whether or not somebody, you know, calls out, I'm using this feature or that feature, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what is the quality of the experience overall? Mm. Are they able to hit their visual quality? Are they able to hit their frame rate and performance goals? Are they able to deliver on their creative vision? So for us, it's less about, you know, checking boxes on this feature's used, this feature's, this feature's used. <laughs> it's more about like, are we really delivering that next gen experience or really enabling that creative vision? So there you go. A lot of developers are using already some of the tool set, but there is probably not going to be that point in time where developers come out and tell us that we can see in this this game sample feedback streaming and in this scene we see VRS and here we see direct machine learning. The transition over to actual next gen features will be gradual and in the end it is always up to the developers which tools help them to achieve their artistic and technical targets for their respective game. What we do know is that in 2022 and beyond we will get a ton of next gen only games. All announced Xbox exclusives in 2022, may they be first party or third party games, will only run on the Xbox Series X and S. With the latest dashboard update of the Xbox, this is not really a big deal for most players that have not been able to purchase a current gen console yet, because as of right now you can stream via xCloud all these Game Pass games onto your Xbox One, Xbox One S or One X. And so going forward, developers who develop games for Xbox can actually focus on implementing the aforementioned features into their game engines. And we get to the details in a second, but I want to mention something else that makes it possible for developers that develop games for the Xbox ecosystem to actually fully utilize the new tool set without thinking about scaling games down and that is the PC. We all know that Xbox isn't just the console anymore, it's console, cloud and PC. And I've said it multiple times during the discussion whether maybe the Xbox Series S is holding game development back. The lowest common denominator on which all these upcoming games will run on is the PC. And I'm not talking about the super 
super high-end gaming rig, but the average gaming device. The thing really is that with Windows 11, Microsoft implemented functionalities like direct storage and everything that the Velocity architecture supports into the operating system. Yes, minimal specs on PC have increased with that, especially making SSDs mandatory to be able to use the Velocity architecture on PC. But with that out of the way, game developers can now actually fully focus on upgrading their game engines to make use of technologies like sampler feedback streaming, direct machine learning etc etc. So let's have a look at some upcoming current gen only games and how they are using the new toolset that is supported by the Xbox Series X and S. And I want to start with Stalker 2 which is due to release in April 2022. This open world horror slash RPG slash first person shooter is probably going to be the first big AAA title that will actually run on the Unreal Engine 5. Yeah I don't know about Fortnite but I'm taking that out of the picture, you know what I mean. In 2020 and 2021 we have seen a lot of different tech demos on what the next gen Unreal Engine, the Unreal Engine 5 can actually do. The interesting thing here really is that in all these tech demos we have not seen anything outside of different rocky environments. So when a few months ago GSC Game World announced that they are actually running Stalker 2 on the Unreal Engine 5, I was super excited to see how they will implement things like vegetation, water and translucent materials in the engine. The first gameplay that they have shown looks absolutely stunning and the question really is how will they be able to make that game run in 4K 60fps while still featuring some of these next gen features like ray tracing. Yes, you can actually see that this game features ray tracing in scenes like this where light is actually bouncing off walls giving a colored glow to the environment. You can see it in off screen reflections and when you see light going through smoke. So the question really is how can they keep the performance and resolution up? Well as for resolution I don't think that it's going to be native 4K. We know that the Unreal Engine 5 supports a very smart upscaling technology called Temporal Super Resolution. This is basically Epic's version of technologies like AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or Nvidia's DLSS. So that will definitely help with the image quality but given the performance targets and the insanely high texture quality that is required for the so called Nanite technology within the Unreal Engine 5, I think this will be one of the first games that will actually use sampler feedback streaming. Epic has talked about it multiple times in their demos how this technology actually helps them to deal with these huge assets that are required to make use of the Nanite technology. Just to recall, Nanite is a technology that allows for ultra sharp textures so when you get close to the textures they won't get blurry anymore. That means that a ton of high resolution assets just have to be loaded into the memory pool and sampler feedback streaming is that technology where Microsoft allows developers to move assets in and out of the RAM really quickly so that in the memory pool only the data assets are available that are actually depicted on screen. We also know that variable rate shading is already very well implemented in the Unreal Engine 4, meaning that developers that move over to Unreal 5 can also make use of BRS. Just a reminder on what that technology does. Variable rate shading allows developers to prioritize pixels in an image that needs to be rendered. The idea is very simple. Not every pixel in an image needs the same focus of rendering time. Let's have a look here at this example. In a racing game, do you really pay attention for instance to the trees in the background or the sky? You probably don't. What you do pay attention to is the car itself. Developers can combine thanks to VRS in certain areas of the image pixels and therefore save rendering time which increases the performance and therefore leads to a more stable frame rate less shutters in the game and a smoother gameplay experience. We have seen it for instance applied in an update of Gears 5. So given what we know about the Unreal Engine 5 and what we have seen, I think Stalker 2 is definitely going to be one of those games that will make use of a lot of these new technologies and that's why it's only available on current gen hardware. One the next gen technology that has been advertised heavily in the lead up to the launch of the Xbox Series X were mesh shaders and to this day this is a big question mark because we have not really seen them implemented in an actual game. And that's because if you want to implement mesh shaders in an actual game, you actually have to change the entire rendering pipeline in your game engine. The details on that are definitely a topic for another video, but the thing is that that's the reason why we will probably have to wait a bit further into the generation until we see mesh shaders in action. One game that I could see actually make use of them is the upcoming Starfield. We know that Todd Howard, the mastermind behind the game, has mentioned that their new creation engine 2.0 has been developed from the ground up with the current gen consoles in mind. He also said that it is going to be the biggest technical 
lead they have ever had in between two games. To quote him, From rendering to animation to pathing to procedural generation, I don't want to say everything, but it is a significant overhaul. So we have not seen continued gameplay for Starfield yet, but we have seen an in-engine trailer. And when Bethesda released that trailer, they heavily emphasized that they did not apply any cinematic tricks. So if we hold them to their words, the trailer we see here should actually represent in-game graphics. And that would be super impressive, because we have seen off-screen reflections that hint at ray tracing. We have seen fast camera movements across vast landscapes, which suggests that they will definitely make use of fast asset streaming in and out of the memory pool, aka sample feedback streaming. They have shown very impressive texture details and some great lighting technologies when it comes to volumetric effects like smoke. Of course, we can't say for sure, but this altogether definitely hints at Starfield being one of those next-gen showcases when it launches in November 2022. But with that, I already want to come to my conclusion. The first year in a new console generation is typically filled with a lot of cross-gen games and it's not really new that we won't see the full potential of what the hardware can do until a few years into the generation. And as Jason Ronald said, we should not expect game developers to simply make checkboxes behind all these technologies we discussed. It always comes down to the artistic vision and performance targets of a respective game. But nevertheless, I think in 2022 with those true next-gen games, we will start to see a lot more of what the hardware is actually capable of. And being a tech enthusiast, I do hope that developers will also share some insight of how they will achieve those next-gen visuals. We will get games like the discussed Stalker 2 and Starfield, but probably we will also get games like the new Forza Motorsport that will feature an entirely new developed engine. We will see next year or in 23 games like Hellblade 2, Fable, About, etc. etc. that will make use of a lot of these tools. And with the Game Awards around the corner and a lot of rumors going on that games like Hellblade 2 will be shown off, I think we are close to see more of the true next-gen experiences and technologies. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can become a channel member and get early access to my videos and custom-made badges and emojis. And let me thank everyone who supports this channel in any kind of way. You guys are awesome and make this channel to what it is. And now, let me know in the comments down below, which games do you think will show true next-gen technologies in 2022 or beyond? And besides here on YouTube, you can also hit me up on Twitter, where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions. But for now, thank you very much for watching, I see you the next time and game on!